But uh, Bill, you're you're running a Twitch channel, podcast, obviously a YouTube channel, then coming out of the Twitch channel. Uh, tell me a bit about the Nintendo Switch podcast that you started. I guess it's now 2016, so coming up on your two-year anniversary. Uh, what, uh, what? What? Why did you start it? I guess going back to the beginning, and sure, what was your motivation for it? And is this your first go around with podcasting? Well, um, I, okay, so it's not my first go around with podcasting, but it's my first. I hate to use the word successful because e- even as as well as the podcast is doing. And first off, I never thought that it would ever do as well as it does. I'm still not satisfied. I'm like, I got to get better. I got to improve. I've got to, you know, I'm always chasing something, uh, you know. Um, It's, uh, you know, it's been a really, really fun journey. I started the podcast like the day that Nintendo announced that the name of their new console was uh, the Switch. I was sitting there and I was like, uh, I I was just sitting there with a a pad of paper and a pencil and I was probably a pen because I hate pencil. Uh, And I was just scratching down like, how can I work Switch into a podcast title about Nintendo? And um, my son was was, uh, talking about Minecraft or something and I thought, Switchcraft, Switchcraft that's perfect. It's kind of, it kind of flows. And so immediately I went out to my, um, uh, my, well, it was at the time it was my wife's sewing room. Uh, it, cause I still didn't have, uh, the glorious podcast studio that, <laughs> that I have now. Um, but I went out to my wife's sewing room and sat down and I recorded like this quick 10 minute blurb. I was like, Hey, this is the podcast. We're going to, I'm going to talk about Nintendo. And, uh, then I uploaded it and, uh, that was my first episode was like just 10 minutes saying this is my show. I've got the name. (laughs) So somebody else didn't take it (laughs) because I thought it was a good name. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do when Nintendo does the next, uh, whatever the next thing's called. I'm going to have to come up with something else. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's a great way to start. And I mean, it's kind of like domain squatting of the sorts, I guess, in the podcasting world, I guess, what else do you do to try and reserve a a podcast name and get it out there before. And I, I, I tried I tried to make it a scripted show because it's a one guy show. It's just Mm me uh, talking to the listener. I kind of try and treat it like a conversation where I'm both sides of the conversation. So I, I say what I think and then I say, well, but somebody else might think this. And a lot of people have reached out to me and said it feels like it's conversational, even though it's just me talking. Um, But uh, I tried to make it a scripted show and that lasted for, I don't know, like maybe nine episodes uh, where I would write out a script and then I would sit down and I would read the script. And um, I I, I was able to do that, but the writing of the script took so much time that I just couldn't like after nine episodes, I said, well, you know, I don't have much to say this week. So, cause the switch still hadn't come out. Right. Uh, So I was just like, I'll I'll just put it on the back burner and, uh, I'll, I'll focus on the, this other podcast that I was already doing at the time, which was Run, Jump, Stomp. And um, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the Switch when I have something to talk about because the Switch isn't out yet. I don't have anything to say. Uh, and then when the Switch came out and I was uh, I was on my Twitch stream, I was unboxing my Switch and, uh, you know, talking about, you know, all this stuff uh, that goes with it and playing Zelda and I was like, you know, I'm going to bring back Switchcraft. And I kept thinking about how am I going to do it to make it different than other shows? Because there's going to be a thousand shows out there. And I said, I'm going to do no scripting. Um, it's going to – everything is off the cuff, like everything. I, I just find sh- uh, the stories that I want to talk about, and I put them in the show notes, but I don't – like plan out what I'm going to say ahead of time. And then I sit down and when I record, it's just almost like a stream of consciousness thing. And not only that, but I'm going to do it three a week uh, and, and like telling my audience that uh, my audience at the time, my audience was like three people, <laughs> yeah. but telling my audience I'm doing this three times a week that made me feel like, all right, I, I don't really have much of a choice. I better deliver on this. And for the most part, with the exception of, going out of town uh, for my anniversary or uh, during Christmas 
it's been three episodes a week. And even during those times, I've usually been able to get a guest to come on and, and we record something ahead of time. And then I have it set up, queued up to drop when I'm gone. So it, I've tried to be really, really reliable with my schedule. Yeah. I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's it's just a conversation that uh, happens to have a, a second person this time, I guess. So you, there you, you go. Have to adjust I'm not to used that, to this. But, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask you though is how much do you think doing it three times a week, uh, like sort of it's like I guess setting yourself that uh, like goal and um, almost like responsibility of like publicly saying I'm going to do this three times a week. How much do you think that contributed to the success, you know, of of the show? going forward as opposed to the, the I guess the traditional route if there is one in podcasting would be like once a week we're going to do this thing and put all our eggs in this one episode I guess or whatever the, mm -hmm. the analogy is uh, how much did three times a week help do you think in getting the I think audience? I think it helped a lot uh, mostly because okay we compare this to other podcasts that do like an, an hour show uh, once a week my show my <laughs> My ridiculous goal is to have it be 20 minutes three times a week. I never get it down to 20 minutes. It's almost always a half an hour. Um, so, but my my podcast, if I took all three episodes in a week and smashed them together and put them out once a week, I think I would do significantly worse. And the reason why is that Switchcraft is mostly a news show. It's like talking about what's going on in the video game industry focused around Nintendo. And... Whereas one thing that I noticed is one of my favorite podcasts uh, was uh, Nintendo Voice Chat back when Jose Otero was in charge of that uh, show. Uh, he ended up going on to work for Nintendo. And um, I, I loved that show, but it drove me crazy when they would have a podcast and the next day or later that day, uh, Nintendo would make this huge announcement and then I would have to sit there and wait. Oh, man, what are they going to say about this? I got to wait a full week. Um, so I thought if I did it three times a week and kept, kept each episode short, sh as short as I can, then people would subscribe to the podcast. And, you know, if Nintendo drops news on Monday and everybody else did their show on Sunday, well, guess what? I have an episode coming up on Tuesday. If they do something on Wednesday, I've got an episode coming up on Thursday. If they did something on Friday, I've got an episode coming up on Saturday. So it's always like I can have some fresh stuff to talk about. And even if the if we go through a week and Nintendo doesn't announce anything, I can just talk about you know what Nintendo is doing in the video game industry as a whole, or you know new games that are announced for the Switch, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, doing the shorter episodes uh, three times a week has really helped my podcast. In fact, most of the, uh, I wouldn't say most of the feedback, but much of the feedback that I get from listeners is, I love that the show is three times a week. I love that the show is short. Right. Which is funny, even in, like, just doing the math, obviously, it's it's still an hour a week, give or take. I mean, it might be an hour and a half even that you're giving mm -hmm. them content and so they're listening but yeah that breaking it down into sort of bite-sized chunks i think is a, a good takeaway for podcasters too who are often guilty of loving to hear their own voice first of all and then wanting to just like not not deal with editing not deal with like trying to focus in on a specific thing and just let the tape roll as it were and uh, go for an hour hour and a half I, I say that knowing that this conversation probably will end up being an hour long episode and so the classic thing in podcasts at least whenever i edit a show and someone's talking about well, we're aiming to not be an hour long show. We're going to try and be for like do a half hour episode and I can look at the the, the recording and know actually you did <laughs> you went an hour so don't, you're guilty of it. So just for folks if you're looking at your podcast player or whatever as you listen to this, this will probably end up being another hour show. So but it, I I do think that focus is is a great way to help keep listeners wanting to listen because they, they it's not a big commitment to listen first of all, but then the, it does build momentum and if you're able to keep up that that recording schedule obviously that's the the, uh, the other flip side of it i got too is the just scheduling and keeping up doing it is it takes time obviously and uh but if you can do that i think it, it can lead to much success in in building community especially and uh that's what i was going to ask you next i guess is you do the i noticed you're doing the recordings on twitch basically like live live to tape as it were um streaming out to the to your audience that way is that something you always did or did that sort of come after the fact or later that that came after the fact um, on my uh, on my other podcast, which was Run Jump Stomp, which is not around anymore. 
um, that was, um, it was, well, it was actually, it started out with just me talking about the video game industry as a whole, uh, instead of just focusing on Nintendo. And that's, I, th I think the main reason why that podcast, uh, floundered was because I was too general, not niche enough. And being as small as I was going real general isn't going to work for me. So I wanted to go more niche. Um, and then eventually I, I, I wasn't as comfortable just talking, doing what I do on Switchcraft now. So I reached out to another Twitch streamer and I said, hey, man, you want to do a show uh, or a podcast together? And he said, sure, that sounds like fun. And uh, uh, so he joined Run Jump Stomp and it was us talking. And because we're both Twitch streamers, we figured, well, we should just do it live because then his audience is watching and my audience is watching and if they're watching us do it, then maybe they'll download it. And so I, I kind of got in the habit of just doing it live to tape. Um, that being said, uh, when I started Switchcraft, you know, it was a scripted show. So I was just doing that, you know, in my free time. And, and honestly, the way that I ended up doing it, because I used to stream a lot more video games on Twitch. Uh, and a, a lot of that has been replaced with me doing the podcast because I do the podcast three days a week. Um, what I was doing is I would stream video games and then on the days when I wasn't streaming a video game, I would, I would sit down and I would record my episode of, of Switchcraft. And um, eventually what I started doing is I had somebody reach out and they were like, hey, do you have a Patreon? And I was like, no, I don't have a Patreon. I don't know what I would offer people to entice them to, to do it. And I just, I felt like, I don't, I didn't really want to do it. And finally they talked me into setting up a Patreon. And, I, and one of the things that I did was I was like, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll make a channel on my discord that only patrons can be part of. And I'll, when I'm and I'll be in that channel when I record the podcast. So if you happen to see that I'm in there, jump in if you're a patron and you can listen to the show live. And after doing that for, I don't know, maybe 10 episodes or so, um, somebody said, Hey, you should just stream this on Twitch so that we, cause, cause there's only at this point, I only had like two or three or four patrons and they were like, we don't have anybody to talk to. There's only a few of us. So you should just do this live on Twitch. And we're, we're only your patrons, not for this. We're your patrons because we just want to support what you're doing. It's not because we want to do the show live, but if you're going to do the show live, then just do it for everybody. And I was like, okay, fine. So I, uh, I started streaming that on Twitch and that kind of took over my Twitch channel. I still play games on there, but not nearly as much, uh, as I used to, which is, it, that's a lot easier is sitting there and playing a game yeah. on Twitch than doing a <laughs> podcast. So, uh, sometimes I miss those days, but I'm really enjoying what I've been doing. Yeah, and that's right. For folks who haven't used Discord, I guess just in terms of community building around a podcast, Discord is oh. you can kind of equate it to Slack, but it's different. It's a uh, it just has more user. It's like what you get probably if you paid for Slack, which not, none of us do. <laughs> and so uh, you get user control, you get channel control as far as like who has access, who can post in something, versus just being able to read it. In in Bill's case, you're using it probably as just like they could listen but couldn't talk back to you. I'm guessing. Yeah. When you're recording, so they could hear it. It's kind of like a live stream, but without um, any just audio i guess um similarly you can have yeah different rooms are available to different people so it works really great in conjunction with community building that is around say financial support or perks or benefits or things like that we use it at good stuff and i, I would say we kind of just are stumbling through it right now we're we don't really know what we're doing with it and how we're using it and we have a patreon but it's kind of tied in people are different podcasts have their own patreon so it's a, a bit of a mess that way but it is a great, if you're sort of frustrated with something like Slack or a forum or whatever, Discord is a great option to look at. It's not, I guess I should say, it's not the prettiest app sometimes. <laughs> the emoji I find are really ugly and the reaction stuff. But that being said, it's a great tool to use uh, for building community and, and does have a, that option of like incorporating live or um, audio and video chats and stuff with your listeners or community that, that go really well, I think, with a, a podcast where you're wanting to maybe give some behind the scenes stuff or take audience feedback that isn't in a live stream, Twitch, you know, YouTube, whatever kind of channel. So, yeah, I look at it as a way to just keep that conversation going uh, because if think of it this way, if, if uh, people are listening to your podcast, they're probably not interacting with you. Okay. 
um, the the number of people who listen to a podcast that also will send you an email or something are very very small. Yeah. The number of people if you're if you're doing it live on Twitch, now you've got that interaction right. But as soon as you stop streaming, that interaction goes away. If you give the people a place to go to hang out with other people who are like them. And guess what? If they're all listening to the same podcast, they probably have other things in common. So if you give them a place to hang out and you, of course, get awesome moderators and make sure that it's a, uh, a safe place for people uh, and you set up the, 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 the expectations of what this channel is going to be like, then you keep that conversation going even when you're not a part of it, even when you are off doing something else. I know that in my Discord, there's conversations that are happening. People are talking about this game or that game, um, or, or I can open it up and look and be like, oh, man, that's a really good point. I, I can talk back to them. It is really weird the first time uh, that, like, this was, I've had the Discord for a really long time, and uh, a new person joined, and uh, this was recently. And I said, "Oh, hey, welcome!" And they're like, "They're like, this Discord's the the best. the The podcast host actually said hi to me." And I was like, "Well, of <laughs> of course, that's what Discord's all about." But yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a really good way to build a community. And, and if you're not you, if you're a podcaster and you're not using Discord, I feel like you're making a huge mistake. Or Slack, if you want to use Slack, yeah, that's fine that. too. I prefer Discord because it's free. Yeah. <laughs> And there is a, the, the, to um, alleviate anybody who's concerned, there is a paid option. Like you pay to be, I forget what it's called, Nitro or something. It's like a, you know, yeah. $50 a year and you get a few little perks in the, in the app and stuff. But it is, they do take money. They, it's not just like they're going to disappear tomorrow. Um, and they seem to be doing really well for all that I see, anyways, too. Um, so it's, it is a good alternative to Slack. It's a great alternative to setting up, like if you ever fought with setting up a membership forum or like a website for forums. Oh, God, no. It's like, this is just like a dream. You're like in heaven compared to that. And you don't have to worry about servers and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I agree. I think it. I think that Discord is a necessity for podcasts. And how how much do you think the doing the Twitch side of it? Because so, I know that's a thing. Podcasters back when I was doing this interview show uh, last in 2015, it wasn't even really there was. I'm not saying there wasn't people live streaming, and there was. I'm sure podcasters using Twitch even. Uh, certainly that happened, but Twitch and podcasting and talk shows or whatever they're called on Twitch. Um, have kind of like, it feels like there's a growing movement of people coming to Twitch, primarily, I think, in reaction to maybe what YouTube did or not wanting to be on Facebook or whatever the reason might be. But how much do you think that it feels like the community on Twitch is a sort of fun, creative community as opposed to, a, <laughs> this is like a gross mis mischaracterization, but like businessy YouTube marketing folks over on YouTube, let's say. Um, how much do you think choosing Twitch as like sort of primary platform of focus for you helps with what you're trying to do with the show? Well, um, I'll say this. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So there, there's a couple ways to tackle this. And first off is the YouTube versus Twitch kind of thing. Um, YouTube is every time that I've, I've tried live streaming on both platforms and every time that I've tried live streaming on YouTube, a much younger audience shows up. And I'm a teacher and I spend all day with young people. And when I'm done with that for the day, nothing against young people, but I don't want to hang out with them yeah. after work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So after work, I want to hang out with people who are a little older, uh, a little more mature, um, you know, and it's weird because I talk about video games, which is, you know, generally thought of as a young person's thing. But uh, when, whenever I've tried streaming on YouTube, I've had much worse interactions with the community, uh, not businessy type of things, but just like, right. you know, 11 year olds come in and coming into the show and saying, shout me out, shout me out, shout me out. I'm like, okay, guy, just chill out, say hello. And I'll say hi back, you know? Yeah. Uh, and there, there's, there's been times where I flipped back and forth between YouTube or Twitch. And the reason I ended up settling on Twitch is because that's where the most eyeballs are, I think. Uh, as far as live streaming, uh, YouTube has some really great features for like YouTube gaming because every single person gets transcoding. And if you don't know what that is, that's where I send a stream up to the internet or up to YouTube. 
uh, at 1080p, 60 frames per second, uh, 9,000 kilobits per second, and then they re-encode that stream to be to come out at 140p, at 360p, at uh, 480p, at 720p, at and then of course at at the encoding that I'm the the source encoding, mm -hmm. and that means if somebody's got garbage internet, they get to actually watch the show, even if but it, on Twitch, I don't I don't get that transcoding every single time. Like sometimes I do because I'm an affiliate, but I'm not a partner. Partners always get it. Um, but YouTube has that. That's the one thing that YouTube has that I wish the, that I wish Twitch had. Um, so as far as why do I podcast on Twitch? Why do I do it live? I think it has to do with how I've always consumed podcasts because my, the first time I ever did anything in podcasting was, I don't even know how many years ago there was this, uh, this website called AG. Well, actually even before that, there was this website called pseudo, uh, which was based out of New York and they had a show called game time. And this was a video show. And this is a very, very long time ago. <laughs> and this was a video show over the internet and most people were on dial up at this time. Okay. Wow. Uh, so I was lucky because at the time I worked for an internet company and we had fantastic internet. I like, I worked at an ISP right. and we had ridiculously good internet so I could watch this show and interact with them. And eventually, um, that company went out of business, big surprise, a <laughs> video show in dial in the dial up age, they went out of business and, uh, the, the, one of the owners, uh, uh Scott, I can't remember his, or Scott Rubin, uh, he started another website called AGN and they had uh, a show on there called the, the unnamed show. Um, and I was a listener on that and they would record the show live, just like game time on pseudo was also recorded live. This was recorded live and we would all be in IRC chatting to them. And, um, like they asked me to record a, uh, a segment about RPGs because at that time I was really into role playing games. And so, uh, my name on there was Arkatan and I would say it's Arkatan's RPG news and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And I would send in the segment and then they would play it as part of their show. And, you know, I, I would be out with my friends and I'd be like, hey, guys, I got to I'm going to go home for an hour because the, the podcast is going to be live. And I want to sit down and be there in chat when people are hearing the stuff. And my friends would all roll their eyes. That's stupid. Whatever. You're <laughs> a giant nerd. And uh, so like having that live thing, that's always kind of been how podcasting has been for me. That's kind of been the rule, not the exception, even though most people don't listen to podcasts that way. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I don't listen to podcasts that way anymore. But it just, for me, it seemed like the natural fit to stream it someplace, uh, especially because it's a solo show. It gives me people to talk to. I can look at the chat box and I can see, oh, uh, Jimmy in chat says Flubagam. And I'm, all right, well, great. Thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> that's a direct quote from, from Jimmy. Flubagam, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I think what's what the big t sort of takeaway, I guess, from sort of community building and stuff that I, what, you repeated a few times or said it a few times in different ways, but that idea of like waiting for your audience to, to ask for a thing is, is, I know for those of us who want to like, build it and then have the people show up i think having the patience to wait for people to ask for stuff whether it's like a patreon or a certain kind of discord thing or whatever is is a great way to go about it because then you're actually building a thing I, i'm guilty of this where i build the thing and then nobody shows up and i wonder why and it's because well they didn't ask for it. they didn't want that they just wanted the i know with patreon for me it was like i did this patreon thing and i got some success with it a bit of success like a few dollars anyways but like People were like, I, I don't want more stuff from you. I want the stuff, like you said, I think the the stuff you already have, I want that. I'm just going to give you some money. Don't make me listen to more stuff that, uh, on the Patreon or watch more stuff or whatever. And so uh, having the patience, I guess, to sort of wait for your audience to ask for stuff is a, is a great way to sort of build build uh, at, a, at a healthy level, I guess, for yourself that you're not trying to take on everything all at once. So um, I wanted to get into some of the just the gear nerdy stuff as well on uh, as far as recording a podcast because I noticed when you you do the record that your show on Twitch you're you're kind of recording it in segments and you're okay with it's not like you're doing a flawless you know start to finish recording and then hit hit done and then shut off the stream or whatever and people 
people go away or whatever. You're actually doing a bit of like this segment now, then this segment. It's kind of like showing how the sausage is made and being okay with the people knowing that you, you know, do retakes. You might stop, you might start again, you might whatever. And then obviously you go and edit it after the fact. And um, did you sort of stumble in? You kind of alluded a bit to how you're kind of like trying different ways of recording the show and involving Twitch in the live stream. Did, did you sort of settle on that format at some point a while back or how did you figure out to sort of do that? Well, I, I, I always thought it was interesting. I, I was a big fan of Twit yeah. uh, this week in tech. And when when Leo Laporte started his, uh, he's got like his crazy studio, which is insane. Uh, but like, that's how they would do it. They would, I mean, they would do live to tape, but they would also don't do a one man show. I mean, yeah. I guess Leo does the one one man show, but he has people calling in. Uh, I'm a, I'm just doing just with me. Yeah. If, if I were doing a podcast with you as a guest or something, I wouldn't do that format because I can take care of things that need to happen while you're talking. Yeah. You know, I, I can, I can do that kind of thing if I need to. Um, for me doing a one guy show, it's really important that I have a chance to stop talking and I don't want to do a lot of editing, okay? Uh, I try and edit the show as little as possible. I, I, I don't edit for content. The only thing I edit for is audio quality and throwing in music and sound effects between the, uh, between the segments. And the reason that I do the segments the way they are, and I, I talked about this. There's a video that I put out on my YouTube channel, How I Edit uh, My Podcast in Reaper. Um, and I was uh, I was I was using uh, my my digital audio workstation, and I'm recording. And I if I can't think of a good segue to get from one topic to the next, then I just stop recording, and I say, okay, I'm gonna push it forward a, a few seconds, and I'll start recording again. And that will give me a little space, a visual space in uh, Reaper that I can see and I'd be like, okay, right there, I need to throw a sound effect. So I'll go out and find old video game commercials, grab a sound effect from there and drop it in the middle between those two segments. And even though I don't have a segue, I've got something that transitions from one segment to the next. And you would not believe how many people have been like, I, that's one of the things I love most about your show is hearing these old commercials from when I was a kid from like 1970s Atari commercials. Have you seen Atari today? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of people say that that's, that they love that. Um, those little segments that I put between and people have sent in like three hour videos of those segments and I've gone through and <laughs> ripped out the things that I've liked and I've been, Oh man, this is, this is just gold stuff. Uh, but th the reason I do it is not because of, uh, I don't think it's the best way to do it, but it's certainly the quickest way to do it. And when you're putting out three shows a week and you're a one man show and there's nobody else to edit the show, everything I do, everything on my show myself, I've done all the art. I've done all of the, uh, all of the, the, the website, everything I had to do myself. I had to teach myself how to edit. Um, so I don't have time to do it the best way. So I just kind of find the best way for me. Yeah. Yeah, which often I think rather than trying to emulate a bit, like, not that you're not inspired and, and obviously you have people you followed that you're like, oh, hey, I'd love to do it like they do and then sort of put your own spin on mm -hmm. it. But the doing what's necessary for you and then in, in the end you create a show that's you instead of someone else. And so you're, you stumble on maybe that like crutch almost of like, okay, I can't figure out how to end this. I'll just throw some music on and hopefully nobody notices or whatever. But then in the end they kind of notice that it's like, a distinctive thing for you as opposed to some sort of like obvious oh that's where he's you know running out of things to say or whatever because i know i do a, a solo show of my own that's this is kind of what um what when i stumbled i forget how i stumbled across you in the first place i think it was actually like i was looking at you're using fireside.fm to host your podcast i think mm -hmm. dan benjamin had retweeted or tweeted something from you uh, at some point, I was like, oh, Run, Jump, Stop. That sounds like a really cool channel name and then Switchcraft. And I don't have a Switch. I kind of I want to. But anyways, that's another podcast. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the and then I was like, lo ended up watching one of your shows that you recorded. And I was like, oh, he actually like just is, you know, fine with telling people that he's which obviously everybody knows that podcasters edit like it's not like it's a <laughs> it's a hidden secret or whatever like magicians or whatever. Um, but even for my own, I do a solo show that's supposed to be daily, but it's 
not. It's called Dailyish, and so it, it's. Um, but I, I remember I love stumbling. That name. Yeah, <laughs> I remember stumbling on the idea of like I would record a podcast, kind of like what I'm doing right now, where I'm like talking a stream of consciousness, thoughts about something, and I'd be running out of breath, and I'd be like, I don't know what to say, and I have to keep talking, I have to keep talking, I have to keep talking. And I was like, wait a second, I'm not even. I wasn't even streaming it live. I was just talking to my computer. I was like, I can just stop. I don't have to keep talking. I can edit. I can cut things out. It was kind of this dumb revelation, even though I edit shows, plenty of other shows, for my own sort of use case of it, I guess. I was like forcing some other person's restrictions on myself. And and it was like this revelation, stupid kind of revelation of like, oh, I can actually just stop and, and take a breath and think. And not have to like, there's nobody who's going to call me on the fact that I didn't, uh, that I had an edit point or whatever, if, if I did a bad edit or whatever. But maybe I'll start incorporating some music to cover up my... <laughs> Little... There you go. I mean, that's the, the, to the short. I already gave you the long answer. The short answer. I'm bad at editing. I don't <laughs> want to do it. So it's easier to do it this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you touch on you're using Reaper now. I'll put a link in the show notes to uh, obviously to the video uh, where you uh, show a bit about how you edit and stuff like that. But just talk me through, I guess, the the from from your mouth to the computer to out to the world, I guess. What's sort of the, the chain that you've got going? Mic, you know, mixer, etc. OK, are, what are you doing? All right, I've got a uh, well. I started with a Samsung Meteor mic. No, not Samsung. Samsung. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, you know the strong guy. Yeah. Uh, Samsung Meteor mic. That was my first microphone that I recorded um, run, jump, stomp on. Um, I ended up eventually getting a Heil PR40. Uh, that goes into a Behringer Zenix um, Q802 USB mixer which I used to have all set up with like a mix minus and stuff, but I ran into issues with a Windows update. And finally, I just said, I threw my arms up in the air and said, screw it. I'm only going to have it just be for my microphone. And it'll just, my, so my mic goes into the uh, mixer. Mixer comes out into uh, my uh, computer. Now, uh, my headset is a USB headset and I wouldn't recommend this for most people but I love this headset because I hate wires. Yeah, I was going to say I did I noticed you don't have cables running down from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh this is an incredibly expensive headset. It's like 300 bucks. <laughs> um but it is uh it's a Steel Series Pro uh wireless headset. It's got um it's got like a little box that sit. It's a USB box that sits on my desk, and I can have. Uh, it, it has two inputs basically, PC and chat. So when I'm in Windows and I, you know, open up my little uh, click on the speaker icon, there is a game thing on there, and then there's a chat thing on there. And so Discord, or in this case Skype, goes into chat. And what does that mean? It means that I could be streaming on Twitch and I could be on Discord with somebody and I can mute the chat and I can hear the chat mm. so I can hear what people are saying, but nobody else can. And why that's important to me is because I used to be a, uh, well, I used to, I used to raid in Guild Wars 2 and I would stream our raids and I try and keep everything PG and, and uh, yeah. kid friendly. Uh, mostly because I don't want, you know, if, if they do find out that I'm a streamer, uh, at my work, I don't want them saying, boy, look at the people he's hanging out with, you know? Yeah. So I, I can't control what they're going to say. So I can, I just had it set up so that I could hear them, but, but, but the chat couldn't. Um, and, and that's, uh, something that I really, really like. Like the other day I was uh, playing world of Warcraft and, uh, I was just some random guy was in chat with me. And my my stream could not hear him, but I could. And I think that that was important for me. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I really like about these headphones is if you're watching the video, uh, in the middle of this, I can take the battery out, swap it to the other battery, which is in the little box on my desk, and be right back at it um, instantly. Like, it's super fast. It's yeah. super easy. Uh, I, I think it's a fantastic uh, headset. Um, so that's my headset. Uh, you could probably get away with spending a lot less on it, though, if you're just podcasting. I also have a stream deck, which is this thing from Elgato. It's like uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So 15 buttons on this thing, and each button has its own little screen on it. And that's really useful because I stream using OBS, and I can easily just smack a button on there and switch between screens or mute something or unmute something or play sound effects or things like that. Uh, it's a really, like... 
I would definitely recommend if you are if you are a live stream person, then the the Elgato Stream Deck is without a doubt something that you want to pick up because it is so handy. Mm-hmm. I noticed they just came I, out with a Stream Deck Mini too. I think was uh, yeah. So whether that's an option, but yeah, something. It's like, an option, but. <laughs> I don't know. It's too small. People yeah. don't want it smaller. They wanted it bigger. I don't know what Elgato was thinking there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think that's my whole setup. And then into a Windows box. That's uh... yeah. Yeah. It's just a Windows PC. Uh, it's a pretty high end PC because again, I'm a video game player. But uh, uh, you can. I mean, if if you're just worried about podcasting, you can. Yeah. You don't have to have a high end uh, PC for that. And are you using the same like uh, same PC first? I know often streamers on Twitch will have a streaming PC and then a, a recording or game playing PC as well. Are you? But you're just using the one box for both purposes, or do you? Uh, I am just using the one box for both purposes. Most of the video game streams that I do are console games, so I have a a, a capture card in my PC. Um, I can't remember which one it's the, it's an Elgato, uh, HD 60 pro, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I have got that in my PC. And so that means my, my PC is not playing the game and encoding the stream. It's just encoding the stream. And there's been times where I was, uh, you know, world of Warcraft is fine. It, It runs, I don't have any problems with that, but like I was trying to stream a game on my PC and I was, I was just always having technical issues. And it's because my, my PC is while powerful, um, it wasn't powerful enough to play the game at the desired resolution and encode the game at the desired resolution. I was just asking too much of it. So I, I basically went back to just, just be, uh, streaming mostly console games or low end PC games, which is good. Uh, cause the outside has been trying to kill me for a very long time. And I have a lot of injuries. Like I've broken both wrists, my elbow dislocated shoulders, <laughs> And playing on a mouse and keyboard is really, really painful for me. Yeah. Uh, holding a controller is so much more comfortable. So that's another reason why I only stream uh, console games for the most part. Well, it's nice now with, uh, I know, the Switch is, I, when it came out, there was kind of all this, uh, the, not, not that we'll turn this into a Nintendo podcast, but the um, apprehension I felt anyways is like, are they going to actually have sort of premier first party you know great titles or whatever obviously they'll have the mario and the nintendo stuff but having seen like fortnite for example come out on switch is pretty i don't know how it plays compared to the computer side or 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 xbox or whatever but um having that platform on on this or that game on on that platform is a testament i guess to the power of the switch and then just how many options there are i guess for gaming on there and that's really cool that that's an option these days so yeah i agree uh, the uh, one thing I just wanted to touch on before we, I think that's oh editing sorry sorry you're using Reaper on the on software I guess for audio oh editing. yeah yeah, yeah. and I then do you do that. any sort of video editing as well or is the the stream just kind of goes over to YouTube or how do you handle that um, I don't okay so I do edit some videos but the podcast I um, I stream the uh i stream the podcast to twitch in um 720p 60 frames per second uh, or maybe it's 30 frames per second i can't remember but at the same time i'm also recording it locally at 1080p 60 frames per second and that is at 12,000 kilobits per second which is a very very uh well not very very high but it's much higher than i can get away with on twitch because of internet issues and twitch um uh they they limit how much data you can send them at any one time if you send too much they look at it as an attack and they shut down your stream um it it was uh, last year they increased that from 35 kilobits 35 100 kilobits per second to 6,000 kilobits per second. Uh, and, but that's still going to have a lot of artifacting. So what I end up doing is, uh, let's say I sit down to start recording my podcast. I'm already live and and have been talking to chat for the pre-show for a little bit, just kind of saying hi to everybody. And, uh, I let them pick out what song we're going to put on the episode. Uh, so, uh, I'll go through my list and I'll be like, what do you guys think of these two songs? People let me know wh- which one you want to be on the episode. Um, just as a thank you for them to, for being there early. 
and uh, then I will uh, start recording the audio because that's super easy to edit. And then right before I start talking, I'll have my hand on my Elgato Stream Deck, and I'll have a button on there that says go that, that says start recording. And so I'll hit that button. I'll be like, Switchcraft is brought to you live three times a week. Blah 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 blah. And then when I am at the end of the show and I thank the last chatter, I say, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. And then I hit the recording button on uh, my stream deck again. And uh, that is always just to set recording the video. So the video gets recorded from from the moment I hit the button until I hit that button again. And everything that happens in between uh, the times when I screw up and I'm, you know, I can't get the words, I don't know, maybe five or 10 minutes. And then I, I uh, host somebody and, and pass the, uh, pass the audience on to somebody else. And I thank everybody and I hang up and then, um, and then I grab my, my video file, which is in, it's recorded in high quality. I could just export from Twitch, but it won't be as high quality. Mm -hmm. So I grab the video file, drop that on YouTube. And while that's uploading, I open up GIMP, which is this free Photoshop stuff. Cause I'm cheap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I open up GIMP. I make a uh, a thumbnail for YouTube and a thumbnail for my website. Um, I save those to the desktop. And then I grab Reaper. I go through. I do the editing that we talked about before, where I just throw a song on at the beginning and the end. I throw um, uh, sound effects or old commercials between each segment. I put it all together. And by the time I finish that, the video is usually done uploading. And so then I can add the thumbnail to the video and send that to be live. And uh, while that is sending, I render the audio and put the audio on my website and uh, set the thumbnail to that. And it all kind of finishes at the same time. I don't know how it happens, but it does. It all kind of finishes at the same time. And I tend to start recording at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern, and I tend to finish everything around 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern, maybe maybe 4:30 at yeah. the at the latest, uh, and that's for a half an hour show. Uh, keep in mind that you know there's the pre-show and the post-show. Uh, if you're not doing this live, you you can do you you can do it in a lot less time. But the amount of time that I have to spend editing really isn't that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the the video, I that's what I kind of have seen a lot of is YouTube is kind of like the I don't know how many how much of your audience would watch the videos as opposed to listening, but generally podcasters, I've what I've seen anyways is the audio version gets you know 100x and the video version gets 10x or something, whatever the numbers oh yeah are. some scale like that anyways where it's substantially less. But I know it's well part of it for me anyways, and maybe this is for you too. It's just like it's just fun. You get you can do it for free. There's no additional cost to put a video version out. Yep. Uh, other than time, I guess a bit of upload time or whatever, but, um, and there's also there's the odd chance that someone on YouTube will stumble on your show. And so I feel like it's probably worth it to have that, have the archive on, on YouTube. So it's not just locked away somewhere on your computer, but, uh, but yeah, don't, I think that, that, uh, that advice, I guess, if not spending a ton, ton of time editing the ed video version is, is well heard, I guess. Well, video editing takes a lot of time. Uh, I also do edit videos from time to time. So uh, there was a series that I was doing. I stopped doing it. I don't really have a reason for stopping doing it other than I just haven't had the time. But it was a, a, a video series that I was doing on uh, YouTube called NES Archive where I was going through and looking at the history of each Nintendo game for the NES from back in the 80s right. and I would edit those videos and put them together and it was very very time consuming and I just I don't have time for it I wish I did if I if this was my job yeah then I would definitely con continue to do that but I, I you know it very few people watched it the less editing that you can do I think the better for multiple reasons I, I feel like you sound a lot more authentic when you're not cutting things up and oh i was you know talking about this here i'll move this over here and i just don't think it sounds as good uh it feels less like a conversation i, I if you're really good at editing people probably wouldn't know but i suck at that stuff so so i i kind of avoid it um video editing is very very time consuming and then when you're done you have to render and oh my god rendering takes so long and i've got a pretty beefy pc 
yeah. or at least it was beefy a couple of years ago. Rendering video takes an insane amount of time. And when that's happening, you can't do anything else on your computer. Everything's slow as, as, uh, yeah. as hell. And so I just avoid it as much as I possibly can. But if I do edit video, I use uh, uh, Vegas Pro 14. Um, every once in a while, uh, Vegas Pro 14 will be on Humble Bundle. And you can buy it like I bought it for I think it was $20. Uh, it's usually like two or 300 or something stupid like that. Uh, so I got it for 20 bucks and it's really good editing software. It's not the best, but it's better than what I was using before, which was hit film, which is free. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I use Sony uh, or well, it's not Sony anymore. It's just Vegas Pro for my video editing when I do. Yeah. Cool. Um, any other comments, I guess, on, as far as like community building, that's, that's the part I think that, um, most podcasters kind of like drop the ball on and myself included. It's a, it can be a bit of a, a black art, I guess, in terms of, uh, not that you're doing anything devious, but, <laughs> but just in terms of like how best to approach that from a podcasting standpoint, um, any other tips, tricks, things that you found that like all of a sudden you did this thing and then it really hit off with your community or you noticed, uh, you know, an increase in whatever, I don't know if it's listeners or, or just uh, people in your Discord joining Discord, um, you know, stuff like that that kind of just folks might not be even aware of as a way of, of just encouraging their community to, to take part. You've, you've listed a whole bunch of them, so I'm trying to, I'm pulling, you know, <laughs> pulling teeth maybe a bit now at this point to get stuff out of you, but anything else that you, you can think of that we didn't cover? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, and I will, I'll, pre I'll preface this by saying this is the part of podcasting that I'm terrible at. I'm really bad at marketing. I'm bad at tooting my own horn. I'm bad at networking. I'm bad at community building. But if you put out good enough content, people are going to show up, I think. That being said, some of the things that I've done that I think have uh, helped the community or helped me with community building has been, and this is, obviously you're going to have to find something else that does this for you if you're not a video game podcast, but I've done tournaments uh, so we did one, like when Mario Tennis Aces came out, uh, we did a Mario Tennis Aces tournament. Uh, I had people sign up through like a Google, uh, what the heck's it called? Google Blanche. form. Yeah. 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 Google form. Uh, so people sign up through a Google form. I put people up, I made a bracket. I put people up against each other. Uh, they played against each other and I used some of the money that I got from, uh, from my Amazon affiliate link, uh, to buy a gift card for the winner. Hmm. And then, you know, what was even cooler on top of that is a community member reached out to me and they're like, Hey, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give out a gift card too to the winner. And I was like, okay, how about this? Uh, cause they, like, I was just going to do a $5 one. They, they said, I'll do a $10 one. I was like, perfect. First place gets the $10 one. Second place gets the $5 one from me. And um, so hosting tournaments is a really cool way to do that. You can have contests and stuff like that. There is if, if you're going to use Discord, there's a bot that I just found out about. And it's really, really cool. It's called Giveaway Bot. And so uh, like uh, what I ended what you can do is you type like you have an own channel that it's just you and the bot in there and you type commands and then it sets up the giveaway. You hit enter and then. It'll go into this one, uh, whatever channel that you tell it, and it'll say, "Hey, we're giving away, uh, I don't know, a five dollar Nintendo uh, eShop gift card. Um, click this button to enter." And that's all that people have to do is click the button, and then later on, it'll announce the winner. So after the how, however much time you decide, it could be five minutes, it could be five weeks if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can set it up to to go for as long as you want. And I feel like. That's something else that keeps um, keeps people engaged with the community. Anything that you can do to keep people engaged with the community is good because looking back to when I was listening to the unnamed show on the All Games Network and I was sending in my um, – uh, sending in my RPG segment all those years ago and we're talking <laughs> – we're talking like – 20 years ago almost. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a long time. Uh, looking back at that, like I still talk to some of the people who I was in that chat with. 
I mean, that chat still exists. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll get the gumption to download MIRC and rejoin the chat. And I'll be like, hey, everybody, it's Architan. And, you know, I'll, I recognize some of the names that are in there. Some of them are different, but I, yeah. I still recognize some of the names like Bobby Blackwolf and DC Nate and and all those guys that that we, you know, we hung out together back when I was 20 years old, uh, you know, engaging, having a community around your podcast, anything that can keep those people talking to each other. That means that when you show up and you say, Hey, I've got a new thing, check it out. They're much more likely to check it out. Plus if you engage with that community and do something to keep them talking to each other, then when you do something, more than likely, they're going to be talking about what you're doing. They'll be like, oh, hey, Bill, great segment on this thing, or I completely disagree with you about this point. And the most important thing you can do to build your community is be part of it. Don't just set it up and say, all right, hey, guys, I made you this community so you guys can talk to each other. You got to talk to them, too. And that's like I constantly have Discord open. Uh, and, and talk to people and, uh, you know, invite people that you admire into your discord. Uh, even if they, you know, just, just send them that say, Hey, I've got a discord. You might enjoy it. Come on over. Uh, if, if, if they don't come, you, you didn't lose anything. It's not like they're going to tell everybody, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not like walking up to the girl at the, at the lunch counter when you were a kid and asking her to go to the dance with you and all of her friends are, are standing around. Well, yeah. it's a little like that, but it's okay. <laughs> you know what? Man up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, uh, that's great advice. And I think the, uh, um, that's a good, a good spot to end, uh, the conversation anyways, for now on. And, uh, and I'd invite folks to go check out, um, there's a bunch of different ways, obviously you can find Bill, but, uh, twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp. And then of course the website run, jump, stomp.com. And if you throw a slash subscribe on there, you can see all the places, podcast players, et cetera, that you can, uh, subscribe to the Nintendo Switchcraft podcast, and even if you're not like I'm, I'm a video game nerd, but I'm uh, just because of time not as committed as a video game nerd as I wish I was. I guess uh, I'll say that much. And then, um, but it's still fun to listen to and keep up with what's going on. And I think, like Bill said, having a, a short, you know, twenty to thirty minute episode uh, each week, a few times each week, anyways, and then tuning in and watching live, I think it's just kind of fun. If you're a podcaster at all. Uh, it's worth checking out the way that Bill does it, just for a different look at maybe something different from what you do, and then yeah, join the join the community. It's it's free to join, right? You don't have to be a Patreon member to get into no, no. it's or yeah, it's completely free. Everybody can join. Um, I I, tr I know we're ending, but I just want to say this one thing. Mm -hmm. Try and uh, my advice to somebody is try and segment your um, your community as little as possible. Uh, the only reason I have a Patreon is because people asked for it. Eventually I did start making, uh, content that I didn't think fit on the show and put it there as like a bonus. But that was mostly because I wanted to talk about something that wasn't Nintendo and I right. didn't want to make another podcast feed because that costs money. So I was like, well, I'll just put it on there for the patrons. I got a lot of people who showed up for the Patreon just because of that. Yeah. But Everything else that I do is available to everyone. And I, I like I don't do ranks on my Discord. I don't do ranks on my Twitch thing. Like I know there's a lot of people that if you've been watching for 56 hours on on Twitch, they'll be like, oh, you've leveled up to level two or whatever. And that's yeah. cool. But that also makes people feel like, oh, well, I'm not level whatever. And I don't, yeah. I don't want anybody to ever feel like they're a smaller part of the community than anyone else. And that's a big thing that I, I think a lot of people make a mistake with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as welcoming. I mean, there's, there's the, there is the folks who are like the, uh, whatever, the achievement oriented folks, I guess, who maybe go after that. Then they're like, I'm going to, I'm going to get that 56 month title <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, for the most part, I think it's a little intimidating. I know it's, I'm just looking at our own Twitch channel here and good stuff. And R2, the, I, we turned on the bits thing, you know, like, bit, oh yeah. Anyway. Um, and uh, our top two cheerers, or whatever it's called, are two co-hosts here on Good Stuff. So it's people cheering themselves on, I guess, is <laughs> the way that we're <laughs> getting the, the cheers and stuff here. But, um, oh, there we go. Bill just gave us a 
gave us a cheer. Thanks for that. So that's, <laughs> I think that's like a hundred dollars or something, right? I think I haven't got the conversion right into Canadian, but I think that's roughly what it is. So <laughs> you're close. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just I'll just live in that naive world where I think I just got a hundred dollars and go spend it now. Uh, so in in wrapping up, anything other places that I can you can want to send people to your Twitter account or whatever that you want folks to be able to follow you if they're interested in hearing more from Bill and Nintendo. <laughs> Everything is run, jump, stomp, everything. So if you just Google run, jump, stomp, you'll find me. Runjumpstomp.com has all the links you need. I really appreciate you inviting me on the show, man. Yeah, no, thanks. It was a good last minute thing that happened, but it was I'm glad it worked out. And uh, in closing, I guess your advice for somebody who does not have a Nintendo Switch uh, doesn't, I'm not just talking, this isn't just asking for a friend who's actually me, but just for, <laughs> for listeners as well. If you're thinking that Nintendo Switch sounds really cool, what where should I start? I mean, obviously you get a console, but like what's sort of like the, the, the way into the Nintendo Switch world? Breath of the Wild. If if you like... That's the Zelda <laughs> game, right? Yeah, it's the Zelda game. I, I'll talk about this really, really quick. Um, I, I, see, I can't shut up. That's my plan. No, it yeah. won't. It won't, I promise. <laughs> um, Breath of the Wild made me feel when I was playing it like I did when I was a little kid and I was playing the first original Zelda where my friends and I were standing around the, uh, uh, standing around the, the playground or whatever. And we're like, did you find this thing? Oh my God, that's amazing. And when I played breath of the wild, it made me feel like that again. And it was fantastic. So if you're going to get a switch, that's your first game without a doubt. It's my favorite game of all time. It's amazing. Awesome. That's as good an endorsement, I think, as you can get for, for anybody out there. So thanks, Bill, for coming on. And uh, Thank you. We'll, we'll talk to you again another time. I look forward to it. 